Let's get another PE prep problem in, seismic specific this time for all of you taking the, uh, is it just in California? Well, regardless, if you wanna learn about seismic design, here we go. Uh, building vertical lateral system, got some criteria for three different buildings, building one, two, and three, as shown. Building one, a little bit taller, two, short guy, three, somewhere in between. Uh, the vertical lateral system of building type one is a concrete shear wall, it is a bearing wall system. You can have a frame system or a bearing wall system that gives you two different uh, vertical lateral design parameters uh, based on chapter 12 of the ASCE 7. So that additional bit of criteria there is actually important. It's not important for today's problem, but it's important when you are designing as a structural engineer. Building type two is a steel moment resisting frame. And then building type three, concrete moment frames. All right. Uh, some additional site criteria. We are seismic design category C uh, and respectively a site class of type C. Uh, and we have an earthquake today with a predominant period equal to 0.6 seconds. Now the question slated to all of us here today, which of the buildings shown may be in resonance with the earthquake? What you're gonna need is the ASCE 7. Today's problem is using the ASCE 716. Uh, in the not too distant future, we're gonna jump to the 722, but for now, code cycle 716. We're finding ourselves here in 12.8.2 because we need to determine the fundamental period of each of our three structures. Now, fundamental period, T, uh, is defined herein, and you will see that you can boil it down and are permitted to find the approximate period of your structure, T sub A. Um, Finding the actual period instead of your approximate is a longer process in my opinion and something that I don't believe the PE exam would ask of you because you only have those six minutes to solve a problem. Uh, whereas the approximate period, as you will see, is pretty straightforward. Uh, if you keep moving down the list here, you'll see that they provide an equation for the approximate period. And it just has three variables, C sub T, H sub N, raised to the X. Now. Uh, the first one, H sub N, is simply the structural height as defined in section 11.2. We have three really basic rectangular shaped structures here today. So H sub N is literally just the height of each from ground. I have that provided when we go back, you'll see that if you missed it. C sub T and X are coefficients that are defined in table 12.8-2. And if we scroll a little bit further, oh my gosh, it's like they wanted to lay this out simplistically for engineers. And it contains the values of those variables depending on your vertical lateral system of each of your structures. So uh, we have the three structures. Each has a different vertical lateral system. I know it's a lot to say. And so we need to get a C sub T and an X value for each one of those structures and then plug them in to the equation above to get an approximate period of each of our structures. And then we will compare that to the predominant period given to us in the problem statement for the earthquake that we are experiencing, okay? Based on structure type, like I said, the first one is a mouthful. Moment resisting frame systems, we have two of those. We have a concrete moment frame and we have a steel moment frame. We don't know if they're special, intermediate, ordinary, anything like that. It doesn't really matter when you're determining your approximate period. Uh, when you get into detailing and you know designing the actual system, that's when it comes into play. And whether or not you're permitted to use certain system types, depending on the seismic category that you are designing for. So, but that's a whole, that's a whole nother thing. That's not part of this six minute problem, all right? But just think about those things in the back of your head, okay? Moment resisting frame systems in which the frames resist 100% of the required seismic force. Uh, so that means the whole structure has moment resisting frames in it. Uh, classically for, you know, like, I don't know necessarily mid rises, but I know high rises classically, it, that is not the case typically. Um, more often than not, you will have some type of core, something that will house all the elevators and stuff like that, and really just provide additional lateral stiffness and capacity for those taller buildings. And those cores would be something like shear walls, whether concrete or masonry, most likely concrete. And then you would have a secondary vertical lateral system like moment frames that wrap around the perimeter of your high rise that provide additional um, stiffness and lateral support. 
And then it says, uh, are not enclosed or joined by components that are more rigid and will prevent the frames from deflecting. We're subjected to seismic forces. Okay. Uh, for today's example, we are assuming that we meet that criteria. It goes and breaks it down into two different moment frames, steel and concrete. Those both have their own values. And we have for steel, these two values. Then we have for concrete, these two values. We'll go back and we'll plug those in. Uh, the next option we have, steel eccentrically braced frames in accordance with table 12.2-1. Uh, well, we don't have any eccentrically braced frames here today, so we can skip right over it. Then we have steel buckle restrained brace frames. Don't have any of those today as well. Those are great in seismic application, by the way, but we don't have them. And actually steel eccentrically braced frames are really great in seismic application as well. They're kind of scary to design, at least in my opinion, just because they don't do them, but I have learned about them when I was studying for the SE. Cool systems. And then uh, every other vertical lateral system gets lumped into other criteria, which is our last option here. All other structural systems with information or values provided. We'll take those for our non-moment uh, frame system. So that was what? Building one with the concrete shear walls. And we'll use that criteria. Now, you can use all this information, and I believe you can get to a final answer for this question. But you will see moving forward, because you want to be completely in tune with all of the information provided in these seismic chapters when taking the seismic exam, that there's other criteria for your approximate period. Well, structures not exceeding 12 stories above the base is defined uh, for where the seismic force resisting system consists entirely of concrete or moment frame resisting frames, uh, concrete or steel moment resisting frames, and the average story height is at least 10 feet, you get to use this alternative equation. We weren't given any criteria about uh, story heights, number of stories, so we're not gonna really use that here today, but it is available to you. Next, you have another approximate period uh, equation, which is this one for masonry or concrete shear wall structures not exceeding 120 feet in height. That is building one for us, so we could technically use this. We look further here, we have three variables. One of them is provided here as a constant. The other CW has this honking ass equation that yes, they then provide definitions for the variables within them. And if you read through those definitions, you'll see that it gets into length of shear wall, number of shear walls in the building, effective in resisting lateral forces in the direction under consideration, web area of shear wall, area of base structure. So it asks for a lot of additional criteria that we weren't provided in the question. So uh, this is kind of an avenue that we're not gonna wanna explore because we, we would have to start assuming things and that's something that we don't wanna do. So we are gonna stick with the original equation, which is completely acceptable to move forward. Let's just call out the height of our structures. You can see them here visually. Building one is 93 feet, two is 44 feet, and three is 54 feet. With everything plugged in from the tables in the ASCE 7, as well as the heights that we just talked about, you get uh, plugged in equations that look like this for buildings one, two, and three. Pretty straightforward. You will notice that variables, uh, the values of the variables change pretty significantly based on your vertical lateral system of your structure. So it's important to make sure you fully grasp and understand what system you have, and then be confident with that to move forward because it, it will significantly change things down the road as you're designing. It's a very important step. With everything plugged in, we get 0 0.6 seconds. 0.578 seconds, we'll get a little more sharpening of the pencil, 0.579 seconds. So all of these, in my opinion, wow, that's a horrible. So all of these, in my opinion, really land on an approximate period equal to 0.6 seconds. Well, that's no bueno because our earthquake that we're experiencing has a predominant period of 0.6 seconds. So it is very likely, in my opinion, that all three of these different structures of different heights of different lateral systems are going to resonate with that, uh, that earthquake, which is not a great thing. So for today's answer, I would say it's D. It's one, two, and three. And just take a second to kind of digest that and think about it. You, you have, I guess, classically uh, 
on a very boiled down level, you may look at the height of a building and think about, um, you know, classifying that as what type of earthquake may affect it the most. You know, is it a short, violent earthquake? Is it a long, drawn out earthquake? Um, I know classically you might see the, uh, the example of using like a tennis ball connected to like a, a thin post that's allowed to, to sway back and forth. Um, and depending if you have like a short, quick motion earthquake, the taller ball doesn't move all that much, but the short ball moves a, a shit ton because it's in residence, as opposed to something like a very long, slow drawn out earthquake, the taller building starts to sway back and forth, gets into residence with that motion and causes significant damage for taller structures as opposed to short structures. So different types of motion uh, affect uh, buildings differently, depending on the, like we see here, your vertical lateral system and the height of that building. And really the vertical lateral system, it comes down to the, the overall stiffness of your structure. So more flexible structures behave differently in earthquakes than more rigid structures. Uh, and that's why these values that we just kind of pulled from those tables are all different. Concrete shear walls, very stiff system. So we have a very stiff system, but we have a taller building that equated down to, um, you know, an approximate period of 0.6 seconds, as opposed to the two other structures are, let's call them just roughly half the height of that first structure. However, they consisted of steel moment resisting, or sorry, just moment resisting frames, which are inherently very flexible lateral systems. So the height is decreased by half, but the flexibility of your structures has increased significantly. That has boiled down to an approximate period of those smaller buildings equal to the taller building. But hey, let's get into more of these moving forward. This is Rich with Team Kesteva. I'm glad to be doing PE problems again. You're gonna be seeing a lot more of them. Uh, like and subscribe, do all the things that you gotta do to make YouTube happy, and I'll catch you next time. Later.